everyone, it's Joe from Gadgetry Tech, and I have something exciting to talk about today. That is the Magma Mini from Rock Hat. This is a mini keyboard, AKA a 60% in this case, so the arrow keys are kind of built into the keyboard now. They're not dedicated, um, and it uses membrane switches instead of mechanical. Basically, it's for those who want a mini keyboard, but can't justify spending $100 to $200 for a higher end mechanical board. Rock Hat has the Pyro and the Magma line for more entry level affordable product. And then you step in, uh, into several iterations of the Vulcan line. And I have a lot of those. I've been collecting keyboards. Um, these hobbies are expensive, man, I'm telling you. Uh, this was sent to me for review, so I'm grateful for that. Um, this is only so many things I can purchase and cover. So uh, thank you to Rock Hat for sending this ahead of the launch because that gave me almost two full weeks of playtime on it, which was great. So I like the mini. Um, there's a huge reason why. I'm gonna get into the specs and you know show all the software and customization, talk about details and whatever, but there's one thing that I love about a membrane keyboard, and it's the sound, or lack thereof. The squishy caps aren't for everybody feeling-wise. I'll talk about how it feels to the others, but one thing that's fairly common with a membrane is they're usually pretty quiet. Um, and for some people, that alone is a reason why they still look at it. Now they do make silent mechanical switches, which have you know a mechanical actuation point. They make some noise, but it's not like it's uh, whisper quiet and a membrane is louder. This is a nice affordable way to get a silent keyboard. And they're still gonna give you some gamer stuff because this has RGB. Now this has a five zone RGB. It's not individual key because something has to give at a $50 price range, but you can customize it from left to right. You basically have a five tier gradient. There are two LEDs per zone and it kind of cascades out. It does support AMO, so you can use the Rocket Swarm software <clears throat> to have it synchronized to, you know, let's say a Rocket mouse or headset or several other Rocket products. Anything that supports AMO, you can have it all kind of sync up with each other. Now, one of the advantages of membrane switches is they're typically a little bit more water resistant and Rock Hat has rated this with an IP33 certification, which means it's spill resistant. So whether you have an oops moment or you are a proverbial sweater for some reason and your face is dripping on the board, this is gonna stand up a little bit better to moisture. Obviously, if you have an oops moment and something spills on it, Unplug the USB cable immediately because you don't want power flowing through the board. You'll want to immediately dry it out. If it's something sticky, believe it or not, rinsing it out while it's unplugged and then keeping it upside down. That's a trick that I learned in the past. It may save the board from getting all nasty and sticky. So I talked about unplugging it. That leads me to the USB cable. Rubber cable, not detachable, comes out at the left side of the board. It's a good length, so whether you have your tower on the floor on the left or right of your feet, there's a really good length to it. Um, it can reach pretty far, and uh, obviously you can use an extension cord if you need longer, but it's higher quality cables, just what I expect um, from Rock Hat. They've, they've always had good cables on their keyboards. Now I do wanna, while I'm talking about the build quality, I wanna talk about the back of the board. You actually have six rubber feet, which is really important because this is a very light keyboard. Um, the membrane switches with a plastic chassis, it keeps the weight down. So you have the three pads on the bottom, three pads on the top, and if you flip the pad up, they actually still give you a rubber pad. Some keyboards don't do that, surprisingly. I don't know why, maybe they think the, the angle will help the keyboard dig in, but whether the feet are up or down, it's rubberized, and uh, which is nice. Now, some of you may be wondering what all the fuss is about for mini keyboards, AKA 60s or 65s. So I wanted to show you. So this is a full size keyboard. And the reason why I picked this one is because Rockhead actually makes the Magma in a full size. So these two are the same style boards. Magma um, full size is gonna give you the traditional 10 key plus arrow keys, dedicated page up, down, all that stuff. And that's the size. You can see it's significantly larger than the others. Then you have here, I have the Vulcan um, TKL which still gives you dedicated arrow keys, page up, down, a nice little media button or knob. Um, but that's how much smaller a TKL goes because you're basically lobbing off the 10 key system. Then you have a Mini 65. This is the Vulcan 2 Mini. I absolutely love the Vulcan 2 Mini. It's one of my favorite compact boards. Um, I'll talk about it why after. And then you have the 60%. And the biggest change you can see from the 65 to the 60 at least in these two models, because some brands do it differently. Um, not This isn't like every single company follows this. But you can see here, there's the page up, down, home, and you have dedicated arrow keys on this 65, whereas on the Magma, the arrow keys are right here, built into um, other character sets. 
and you can hold down function to use the arrow keys or you can reassign it uh, in the Rocket Swarm software to customize it to behave how you want. So I just wanted to show you the form factor and now let's do a type test so you can hear what these sound like. Now I'm going to rearrange the boards as I do this this time because my microphone focus pattern is kind of narrow and I don't want boards being off to the side um, impacting the way it's being recorded. So I'm going to start with the Magma Mini. Then I'm going to go to the Vulcan 2 Mini, which is the 65. This is using Titan optical switches instead of membrane. Now I'm going to go to the Vulcan TKL, also using optical switches. And now for the Steel Series, this is the Apex Pro, which uses OmniPoint switches. A um, little bit different, but um, still mechanical. And going back to the Magma Mini. You can see why it's quiet. Now, I'm gonna be real, it feels different. If you are a speed typer, you've had mechanical switches your whole life, you don't know, well I shouldn't say your whole life unless you're really young, but if you've had mechanical switches or optical switches and you're used to that, but you like the idea of an affordable mini, just keep in mind a membrane isn't going to give you the speed and precision that a much more expensive optical or mechanical switch board does. So I would still consider the Vulcan 2 Mini if you want like the premium side, Something like that is gonna be a step up and switch. However, it's three times the price. What's exciting about this is you're getting the mini form factor for a reasonable price. You still get RGB and it's from a reputable brand. So I do like the noise. You can tell there's a massive difference in sound. Um, it's just really pleasant to type on. The key switch actuation point is at the 50% mark. There's no like, it's not like some of the mechanical switches where there's a really clear, almost like a double actuation you press down then when it triggers, um, you feel it kind of release. This is fairly linear. Um, it's a squishy membrane, of course, but it's about the half point. So it's pretty good at minimizing typos. You're traveling like basically a couple millimeters before it's picking up. So you're not gonna have that many accidental key presses. I did wanna show you too, while this is on, because I have the top-down view, using AMO, AMO is a responsive uh, lighting profile from Swarm. So I'll get into Swarm in a sec, but if you press and hold the key, you can see it kind of branches out with the zone. That is a reactionary uh, lighting scheme to my pressing on the keyboard. So there are some profiles that can leverage that. I just wanna show you that. It's kind of a cool little RGB trick that I like that they do. All right, so looking at the Rocket Swarm software, we're gonna go over a few basics. I've reviewed a lot of products with Swarm in the past, but if this is your first video watching, hopefully this is helpful. You can have sound feedback. This isn't changing the way the sound of the keyboard is. It's literally playing a sound in Windows. So I strongly recommend leaving that off. However, if for any reason you want that, you can turn that on. Character repeat delay is if you're pressing and holding a key, how many times is it going to repeat the key, let's say per 10 seconds, you can change that speed. Now the profiles at the bottom, profile slots are based off an executable. So if you load Adobe Premiere and you want it to have custom functions or keys assigned to it, you can have it switch to that profile. It might be as simple as you just want a unique lighting profile based off what game you're doing. You can do that, however, um, Part of why the Magma price is lower is because there's no onboard memory. It relies on the Swarm client uh, to tell it what to do based off the application. So it's not like you're holding down a button and hitting profile one, two, three, four. You have to do it in Swarm, whether it's automatic or you're choosing your profile separately. But it does let you customize both keys and lighting. Key assignment, this is where we can customize the board. Now, I don't wanna to spend too much time on this because there's just so much you can change. You have easy shift, which is basically like a, almost like an alt click to a mouse. So if you're pressing the easy shift button, which in this case is to assign a cap lock, you can have other keys do a secondary function. If I hold the function key down on the keyboard, you can do a few things uh, already built in. You have the brightness adjustments. So I can change the total RGB lighting. I can actually turn the lighting off. I have some media keys here kind of blending in with the B and M so I can adjust my volume up and down on Windows, which it's doing now. 
and then I can obviously mute. So there's a few extra functions built in, and again, you can assign it so these keys right here can be your arrow keys, or do your traditional, you know, Alt, Scroll Lock, Control, etc. So there are extra shortcuts built in, and then what's really cool is if you hit Caps Lock, you can kind of see this little spot turn white. So, uh, and then if you're in game mode, which is function G, now you can see the game mode is activated. That's gonna disable your Windows key and you can do other customizations from there. So I like that they have this little status lights of hidden uh, LEDs to tell you what you know what's going on. Some keyboards will change the color of caps or have a tiny LED that you can't always see. So that's kind of nice. And then lastly, if you go to key illumination here at the top, this is set to AMO. Like I said, that's their intelligent lighting. You can do wave, you can choose the speed of wave, and it's not changing because I have auto apply turned off down here at the bottom. But if I hit apply, you can see the keyboard kind of resync and it'll start changing here in just a moment as it's written. There we go. So now it's gonna do the lighting profile that I have selected here. And then just to go as another example, fully lit. So there's themes where they have these predefined gradients. However, in Fully Lit, if I click Custom, this is where I can make my own custom gradient. And you get the access to like, you know, I think they say, what is it, 16 million colors. So you can pick any color you want as long as you're sticking to your five zones, of course, so you can kind of make it unique. I've always left AMO on because I use, usually use more than one Rocket product, and I love how they're synced because you can see here that the mouse is blue when this was blue. They actually know that most people play with the mouse on the right side of the keyboard. So the lighting profile is actually synced to it this way. So um, it flows into the right, which is really cool. Now, believe it or not, there's actually not as many options as you'd think, especially from like the big brands in a mini form, form factor at a reasonable price range. You have, I think the closest one is actually not a mini, but that's the Apex 3 TKL from SteelSeries, because that one's $5 less than this. It's larger, you saw my size uh, comparison before, it's gonna give you the arrow keys. So it's not even as compact as this, but it's really the only one that lines up price-wise um, for a similar feature set, you know, membrane keys, no onboard memory, it has RGB, stuff like that. Um, when you get into ones like from HyperX, Razer, and Corsair, those are all going to be over $100, which then also steps up to the Vulcan 2 uh, Mini. So again, if you want the mini form factor, you have a lot more choices once you spend over 100, but then you're getting into you know, mechanical switches. There's pros and cons of each brand, and it really comes down to preference. If you're either a brand loyalist or only want to use a certain amount of software, I like that HyperX gives you PBT keycaps. You know, that's kind of a cool feature. Um, but then when you look at that price range, the Vulcan's giving you optical switches with ridiculous RGB illumination. So it's kind of all coming down to what your preferences are. But I think what's really cool is um, this is a pretty unique product, believe it or not, as crazy competitive and congested the keyboard market is. A $50 mini um, from a name brand with good RGB software and reliability is, is a pretty good option. So I think a lot of people are going to be excited on this because it opens the door for a lot more people to buy a keyboard of this size. And just to end on the RGB, I actually like that it's different. A lot of companies will do the traditional illumination, like e whether it's per key or not, um, you'd never get like an extension beyond the keys. So I like this approach because it's almost like all the keys, you know, even when you look real close, it's really hard to see the mechanisms <laughs> that are holding all the switches up or at least the keys up. So it has a different look to it as well. So, um, you know, the style is pretty cool. I think overall it's solid, you know, the, their stabilizers are good. The space bar doesn't really bind if you're pressing one edge over the other. There's actually minimal key wiggle. This $50 board has less key wiggle than my, you know, $150 plus uh, Steel Series board. So that was interesting, but overall I do like it. I hope you found this review helpful. Is it gonna be for everyone? No, um, I think it, the biggest thing is if you're okay with membrane switches or not. I think the RGB is good, but if you don't just spend more money and get an optical or a, a mechanical switch. So anyway, with that being said, thank you so much for stopping by and checking out the review. I hope you found it helpful. That being said, I'll see you next time. Bye.